How was your first race look like? Was that easy for you? Or since you have built this whole Nexus, whole this big network, what did it look like for you? First race in the first day. Well, let me put it to you this way. Mm -hmm. Capital raising found me. I did not, oh, find, nice. I did not find it. Uh -huh. I'm in the club, in the Grand Cardone club, not even two weeks. Um, I met uh, Brad Pickett at that event. He was sitting behind me. Mm -hmm. And it's in, our, it's in our stories because I write books about it. it it's fascinating. Um, we uh, we exchanged information. We stayed in touch. Two weeks later, Brad, who lived in Scottsdale at the time, I live in New York. He pitched a deal because this is a club where you pitch your deal, and then Grant analyzes it and gives you his opinion, and then ultimately you decide. It's not for Grant to decide. The Real Estate Vibe Show, and I'm your host, Rinki Lumba, a commercial real estate investor. And today I have a very, very special guest, my good friend, Megana Agarai with me. Welcome to The Real Estate Vibe Show, Megana. Well, thank you, Vinky, for having me. And uh, I am so happy we finally got this uh, on the books because we've been trying to meet here for what, months? Exactly. Yeah. Busy, busy thank girl. You. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So a little bit about Megana. Megana is a global focus connector, business matchmaker, founder, and a CEO at Eagles MALLC, a consulting firm focusing on business solutions. She's a 10X certified mentor, TV host, inspirational public speaker, and a best-selling author. And today we're going to be talking about the journey overall, what life is all about, or what her journey is in the real estate world. So Megana, before we get started, I would like to ask you if you can briefly share with us, how did you become who you are today? Uh, we can ask God, the universe, my parents, and we would get different answers. But I, um, I believe if I were to answer it in one sentence, it would be decide to go for it and take charge of my own destiny versus having life deciding for me to reverse that and say to the world through my actions, watch me where I take life because life is no longer taking me. And that's how I, um, I am where I am today because of decisions followed by actions. Interesting. So tell me about it. When you say take charge of your own destiny, how did you do that? And what kind of challenges you overcame throughout that journey? Uh, well, when you, when you have certain priorities in life and these priorities become part of your everyday hustle, oftentimes we get lost in the process. We forget to look ourselves in the mirror, check on ourselves and check on others. And in addition, we're not even measuring what's going on in our lives. And then when you have a moment of pause and reflection, and then you do that self-assessment, like you, you, you reboot your computer in my, in my case, rebooting my brain and analyzing what I had done so far in living in this country. And since my 20 year anniversary was approaching, I wanted to, to say out loud, okay, this is what I've done for two decades in the United States, A, B, C, D, E. And I wasn't happy with, um, with the answers. Mm -hmm. And I always say when we are surrounded by uh, people who lie to us, that's pretty dangerous. But I think the most dangerous creature, the biggest liar in the world, it's us lying to ourselves. So others can lie to us, we can lie to others, but the moment we start lying to ourselves, that's where the true danger begins. And because I never lied to myself, I was in a, in a, in a space of numbness, not in a space of lying to myself or being delusional. I realized that I was responding in a very honest way. I'm not happy with A, B, C, D, E. And to back it up with comparison to what others out there are doing or were doing, and then bringing it back home, meaning in my inner self and saying, wait a second, if I was able to do all of the above with no legal status, without speaking English, why can't I also do 
these other things in addition. And that's when I realized when I ran the self-assessment assessment and I got the most honest answer from Yana, which is me speaking in third person, uh, I, I realized that in order for anything to change, I have to make it happen. It cannot come from an outside force. Those are aspects that help us uh, reshape, recreate our futures. But if I am not ready to let me get on, or, okay, let's take charge. And it's not, let's see where this goes. It's, we better get this right this time. Because now we have answers. Now we have systems. We have processes. We have community. We, we have a pool of resources to choose from. There's, there's no more excuses. Lack of language, uh, lack of status, legal status, all those things were things of the past. So stop now, pause rather, not stop, pause, recharge, reframe, and, and reshape your future. And uh, that was the initial thought. And then as I went in the journey of uh, self-rediscovery, I started to check one box off and then another box off and then another box off. And that's when I came to the realization, Vinky, that uh, we are in fact the creators of our own lives for the most part, that we control the outcome, no one else. And taking that full responsibility for everything that's happening around me, for me, about me, through me, uh, it's uh, what uh, the answer I was looking for was. And this is why I show up unapologetically and speak about it because I have receipts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this is good. I mean, you said so many good things, you know, self-realization, self-discovery, take a pause and not respond to the situation versus just reacting because most of the people, I would say 99.9% .9 people, I mean, I'm just like kind of at the high end on the percentage wise, but mostly people are on the autopilot. They're always reacting, not responding and responses when you pause, take a pause and not just use your past experience um, to react on something. So question to you here is, can you share with me that pivotal moment or that turning point for you? Like what happened? How did the switch got flipped? And all of a sudden, boom, the realization, self-discovery, oh my God, let me turn inwards and figure out who I am in order to conquer this world or write my own destiny. Um, I would say it was a combination of things, but when um... When I attended a real estate summit organized by Grand Cardone, December 2021 in Aventura, Florida, mm -hmm. I um, decided to, to attend that event based on a conversation, a relationship that I built with Grand on Clubhouse, on this social app called Clubhouse. Prior to that, I had no, no I don't want to say I had no idea about real estate because I come from the real estate world, but on the management side not necessarily the investment side and the multifamily. I have, I have over a decade of experience on the class A commercial real estate, which in other words is translated as office space, not commercial as if multifamily, which can sound the same, but it's completely different. Um, and uh, because Grant was speaking about this real estate event so often, and uh, of course I'm Albanian, and we love real estate. We own real estate back home, but it's a very different structure. Living in the United States it, and working three jobs and then from three jobs, working two jobs and then going to school, having that mentality, you work hard, you save, you buy a house. And then in addition, you um, save and then you get that six figure job and then you're good. And then you have these paychecks coming in every week or every two weeks and you made it. And then I'm hearing Grant speak about passive cash flow, passive streams of incomes, exits. And I'm like, what is this? And because it was something that I wasn't familiar with, the light bulb went on. I said, this is where I need to focus my uh, attention right now on the things that I don't know. I reached out to Grand Cardone on Clubhouse, asked for a ticket because the event was sold out, oversold, and there was a wait list. He responds and guides me to the right person to acquire a ticket. At that point, I had no choice but to show up, meaning for myself. If I was going to procrastinate or avoid because it was going to be X amount of thousands of dollars to be in that space, I had to go now because the, the, the creator himself took time to respond to a request from me. So what was my excuse at that point? So if I was 50% in, at that point, I was 100% in. I show up at the real estate um, 
summit, those three days that I invested there, sitting on that chair, hearing the success stories, hearing Grant speak about his past. And I was fascinated by the by the human beings that Grant attracted. And that was the moment where I decided through those self-reflections, through those analyses where here I am living in the most beautiful city in the world, in New York City, super powerful city on top of that, thinking that I have a six-figure job, a great title, an amazing community, had been here for, at that point, was almost 19 years, and still be employed by a company, and I am very easily replaceable. I have realized that I willingly had gifted my freedom to a company. In addition, I willingly had given permission to this company to dictate and decide how much money I made, how many vacations I took, how long these vacations were, if I was going to celebrate my cousin's wedding in Albania or not, because now I work in a role. And meanwhile, that was all great. And I was grateful. But then I'm sitting in this space where people have money working for them and they no longer work for money. It's like trading uh, money for time versus for trading <laughs> time for money. Mm-hmm. And, and all these amazing women, especially super powerful women owning thousands of units uh, to the point where you get to own real estate without having any of your own money and learning this game. And it's not just a game. It's about learning the formula that once you apply it correctly, you are not only improving yourself and your family, but also everyone else in your ecosystem. So you become a stronger source. So that's when I decided to quit my job right in that weekend. <laughs> I gave my resignation Mm. and then I went back in the city after the summit and everyone is like, wow, like you are the happiest person we know, knowing that they're not going to have a paycheck come January 1st, because my last day was going to be December 31st and I was at the summit December 13, 14, 15. And I said to Miguel, if we're going to do this, we are going to be all in with no outside uh, distractions, no half way doing things because if I need to keep a job I give it my all and if I now want to create this beautiful life based on what these other success stories are there we cannot be distracted and not lose ourselves in the process because if you are here you cannot be here and if I am committed and loyal and and show up in the world with ethics and integrity and have a company compensate me for my hard work I cannot give the same focus to learning the multifamily network and connect with these amazing people. And what was the worst thing that could happen? I would go for it, maybe not like it, realize it's not for me and go back and apply for another job because we all have to work. Mm-hmm. So that's how I, um, that's how I started in this uh, uh, journey of being uh, an entrepreneur or if there is another word, I don't want to call myself a business owner, but definitely an entrepreneur where um mm-hmm. I gave myself that permission because I knew that when I moved here as an immigrant with no legal status and no English, life was a lot more difficult, knowing that we could be deported at any moment, knowing that I may be fired from that $7 an hour job wearing my mom's shoes and some rich lady's clothes. Mm -hmm. And when I would go back in the memory lane and, um, and have those beautiful experiences from the past act as my angel investors and pushers and and soldiers I'm like we got this because we've had it worse in the past so now there's only good things that can happen from this decision and uh yeah that's that's how it started for me wow I love that story (laughs) reaching out to Grand Cardone in Clubhouse (laughs) yes I, I wanted to emphasize on that experience because a lot of people won't even do that because seeing Grant Cardone's name, first of all, and reaching out to him on Clubhouse and asking him for a ticket for his show, which was sold out, and making it to that show. Wow, kudos to you, girl. So I wanted to find out from you, what was going in your mind? What was the feeling at that time, you know, that you were so motivated or encouraged to reach out to Grant Cardone without even having uh, that much knowledge in real estate, because just learning about the new trade or not knowing the real estate lingo, I would say at this point, but still you had the courage to reach out one of the, I would say, celebrity person in the real estate industry 
So what was that courage behind all that? Um, so when it comes to reaching out to people, Vinky, um, I am pretty courageous. I have never, ever, ever seen a person based on their accomplishments. And in accordance, I would then say hello a certain way or maybe not say hello because they are unapproachable or unreachable. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been this way since I can remember myself, since I can remember functioning in this world, like three, four year old. I've always been the the initiator of any relationship that was needed to be built in order for ABC to happen. And to give you a perfect example, uh, when my brother's visa wasn't being approved, I knew there was going to be this event in um, Albania and the ambassador of the United States for Albania would host a dinner for the US citizens. I requested time off from, from work, flew to Albania the night before, registered for that event, showed up at the residency, the United States consulate or embassy, in, in, in fact, and made it a point to meet Ambassador Lu, shake his hand and let him know, this is who I am. This is what's going on in my family. I need your help. Just like that. Got on a plane when I met the ambassador. And my brother was in the country within six months. And I, okay. didn't, even tell my, I didn't even tell my parents until he opened the door. He walks inside the space and they're like touching him and they, they almost fainted, of course. I love surprising people. And I say my husband will never cheat on me when I get married because I'm always going to surprise him. So just a tip there for all of you. Because, you know, I've done it with, you know, me showing up in Albania and telling my brother, come to the capital. He's like, wait, I just spoke to you. You're in New York. And well, I flew overnight. Now I'm in Tirana. And it's no different with Grant. It's no different with um, uh, asking President Clinton, how are you, Mr. President, as I'm serving him? Diet Coke with no lemon at the restaurant where I used to work or asking Al Pacino for a selfie, knowing that I could risk losing my job because we can do that. So that's just my personality. And, and that there is no, it's not something you teach uh, to anyone. It's, it's actually who you are. But then if you back it up, Vinky, with going to, back to your question, he's Grand Cardone. He's been doing this for a while. Many love him, many don't. It's okay. I'm not here to decide for anyone. But Grant shows up in these spaces, letting others know there is this formula that exists and you don't have to invest with me, but this is how I've gone from point A to point B. And I'm holding this event. So he's putting all this time, money, energy into creating these events for us to learn from. I mean, why am I not going to have the courage to show up to this event and me reaching out to Grant happened like this. He's going on Clubhouse, promoting the event, speaking about the event. I go online, tickets are sold out. I need to get to that event. And he hit me. I'm like, wait a second, why am I asking Speak myself? Mm -hmm. Why am I asking that person if they could get me in touch with someone's from Grant team so I could buy a ticket? I'm like, I am in direct communication with the source. And what's the worst that can happen? He won't respond. But you know what's the best thing that's going to happen is the fact that I took action for Migena. I respected Migena because I am here because I want to learn. And that's the highest compliment you can pay a creator when you actually reach out to them and let them know that you also are aware that they're putting something amazing together and you'd like to be a part of it. So it's not like me needing something. It's actually me saying, Grant, thank you for what you're doing. I would love to be a part of it. You sold me on it. I'm there. Only I don't have a ticket. He responds to me. And that's where I turn from a, a Grant a fan into a, a Grant loyalist. That was that moment for me. And when I was in one of the stages with him, uh, meaning I wasn't on stage, but he was speaking on the stage and I was speaking directly to him and all these hundreds of people listening to us, I grabbed the mic and, and I said it like this, Grant, I don't continue to show up at this exact same event over and over again because of you. I can find you on YouTube, LinkedIn, anywhere and everywhere, because of course you're like omnipresent. I continue to show up because of who you attract in these spaces, because collectively we are worth trillions of dollars. So you make it happen for all of us to have access and proximity to other amazing people. Because if you are in that space, that means that you're doing great things or you're ready to do great things or a combination of the two, but you're just not there to waste time because you have nothing better to do. 
So those rooms are filled with people who are serious to take their lives to the next level. And if he's preparing these platforms for, for all of us to show up and let the world know that we exist and vice versa, I'm in because my investment is in the people. It's mm-hmm. not Grant necessarily. And I tell everybody, Grant goes to work every day for us. And I told him, and I said, the, the reason why I continue to show up and in addition is because when you responded to me on Clubhouse, you sent a very strong message to me and to anyone in my ecosystem that I shared the message with. I'm not busy enough. I'm not important enough. I'm not rich enough not to stop and respond to someone who's looking to do something about their lives. And that's, that's why, and that's, that's, I said, that's the message I got. And, and I said, thank you. And, uh, and clearly we went and we hugged on stage and he's like, that's my shield. Like, and then at least 10 people showed up outside of the event and they're like, we were on the verge of registering for the real estate club. But after we spoke, we heard you speak to Grant, we all signed up. So what happened is exactly what happened for me a year prior, where because of the stories, I was inspired to take charge and move on to the next level. And now I was paying it forward through a share of how this happened for me and others now were inspired. So it's like that, um, that ripple effect. Right, right. And, um, and that again, the courage comes from your heart. The courage comes from within. The courage comes the moment you become your number one fan, which I am. I am my number one biggest fan. I know my mom is, but it's a competition. I think she's my number one <laughs> fan, but I am I am a fan of myself. That's I, true. I lead with heart. And that's where the courage and the confidence comes from. It does not come from knowledge. No, nope. yeah. it does not come from jewelry. It does not come from a beautiful dress. It does not come from my crazy hair, as everyone can see. It. I can't stop touching it. <laughs> you look on. fine. But yeah, the but the question it, it doesn't come from that. It comes from you realizing that you were created your own potential things in the world mm-hmm. so you go out there be responsible and the rest will happen for you the rest will show up for you if you show up for yourself so that's where the confidence comes and i encourage everyone to reach out to any of their mentors that they feel they cannot reach out to you'd be surprised yeah i i really like that story so i'm gonna ask you the next question related to is it like you didn't have uh, the fear of rejection. That's the biggest fear pe- people have. And that's the reason people don't want it to reach out to anybody because they feel like, what if somebody says no? But no is not end of the world. When you get over that feeling, the fear of rejection, you can basically do anything and which is you are doing already and you're uh, projecting yourself to the world. And uh, you're part of so many uh, social groups, so many networks. I see you, you're so active all the time. I think uh, in the morning when I get up, the first message I see is always your name because you're (laughs) always, you know, posting something somewhere. And which is like being omnipresence, you know, it's like your presence really matters. So if you are present all the time, if you're in front of people's eyes, it uh, you build a kind of unspoken trust between between you and your clients or your friends or your network or your nexus, whatever you call it. So uh, I wanted to ask you a question now. I'll, I'll ask you the question regarding your first race because I know uh, you are actively raising as well now. But how did you build all this network or how much effort was involved? If you can briefly share that with me. The network over the years or the network in the multifamily space? Uh, in the real estate space. By attending the real estate summit, mm-hmm. followed by that same weekend, signing up to be on the Grand Cardone Real Estate Club, where on a weekly basis, I would be investing time, exchanging time and energy with Grant, his team. And over at that time, the club was about 450 people uh, by showing up at every single networking event in, you name it, Arizona, California, Florida, Texas, and of course, New York. Uh, By showing up as my true self, uh, I owe a lot of the way I network to how I show up. I'm always transparent. I always let people know that, hey, I am one day old in this game. Mm -hmm. I am five months old in this game. I am a year and a half old in this game. I don't make up stories. I don't fake it till I make it. 
And it's okay for everyone who does that. It's totally fine because again, what works for me may not work for someone else. And I'm not saying that there is one formula. Let's all apply and we'll be successful. Absolutely not. I am sharing only my personal experience. And in addition, another thing that uh, helped me build this um, the network that I have is going to sound very silly, Vinky, but you have observed it too. Uh, because we are in so many different WhatsApp groups and we not necessarily uh, know how every person looks like because we're connected through a phone mm-hmm. and maybe a picture or a business's picture and the name, not necessarily the face. When we are in real life events, uh, I am now, I have now earned it. I will say I have earned it. Uh, the, the, the title of the, uh, the selfie person, because I would spot someone I recognize. I'm like selfie. And I would post it in the WhatsApp groups with the person's name saying, look who I ran into Vinky. And then half the people say, oh my God, that's what Vinky looks like. So good to finally see you. So what I did with that is now when they go to that next event, they know what Vinky looks like. So their chances are higher for them to reach out to you first than roam in a, in a space where they feel alone. But now I have created these spaces where in a way I am pointing out, I'm putting the, the faces with the names. So that's that's been another amazing way um, for me to network. And this is, of course, not by design. This is because I just love hugging people and saying, so good to see you. Let's have this memory for a lifetime. And people come to me now. They're like, you haven't taken our picture yet because they expect it. So that's why I say I've earned it. So the way I network is um, show up as myself. Don't make things up. Let others know who, who I am 100% of the time and, and lead with transparency. I think that's that's how I network. And of course, Vinky, consistency and persistency. Sometimes people that's don't, true. because I can be consistent with, in my messaging, but I don't always get a response back for 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 a capital raise, for, for a book opportunity, for, I don't know, whatever. I'm just making things up now, right? Right. So the persistency is don't assume that they don't like to respond to you. Never assume that. Reach out one more time to the point that they feel so bad, but they reach out to you because you know there's always something awesome between this interaction. Mm -hmm. And, And then decide, okay, we spoke. There is no synergy. Let's move on versus, oh, that person didn't respond to me. I'm going to leave it on the side, move on to the next person. I am all about building one relationship at a time. And that's how I, I have the network that I have uh, because of the, 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 human, the human touch in every single conversation. I really like that because the thing is, most of the time we are cooking our own stories. It's like based on others' actions, we just judge others. Oh God, this thing happened. That's what they're thinking. And I say all the time, if we're going to do other people's work, thinking what they're thinking, what are they going to do? Let them think whatever they're thinking. Do your own thing yourself, you know? And that's what exactly you're doing. So let me ask you, how was your first race look like? Was that easy for you? Or since you have built this whole Nexus, whole this big network, what did it look like for you? First race in the first day. Well, let me put it to you this way. Mm-hmm. Capital raising found me. I did not. Oh, nice. find, I did not find it. Uh-huh. I'm in the club, in the Grand Cardone club, not even two weeks. Um, I met uh, Brad Pickett at that event. He was sitting behind me, mm-hmm. and it's in our it's in our stories because I write books about it. it it's fascinating. Um, we uh, we exchanged information. We stayed in touch. Two weeks later, Brad, who lived in Scottsdale at the time, I live in New York. He pitched a deal because this is a club where you pitch your deal and then Grant analyzes this and gives you his opinion. And then ultimately you decide. It's not for Grant to decide and yeah, let's all go in blindly. Yay, let's get rich. That's not what happens. Brad um, presents a deal. Grant loves it. He absolutely falls in love with the deal because it's one of the perfect deals where it teaches uh, our us as first-time investors how to make your first million dollars, where you don't want to get into the, the 10 unit or the 150 unit, but get into a 32 unit, 4 unit. And Brad took, took action. He took notes and he presents the deal. Grant says, get in touch with my assistant, Annie. I love this. I think we can do something together. And Brad invites me to be on the Zoom call. So it's Brad, Grant, myself, and Annie, the assistant. And meanwhile, we're like pinching ourselves. Like, what is happening? We have Grant Cardone on a one-on-one, week two of, of the club, on a deal that's not even mine. 
-hmm. but because of connecting with someone who brought that deal and he is inviting me to come in the conversation in the deal um grant gave us excellent ideas this and that and uh, then he's like well if i was four years old i would definitely go in for this deal but this is so small for me but i want to help you guys so on and so forth and and of course brad is like we don't want any payments we only want to work with you because you've been our mentor for the next five years would mean everything to us. There's no price you can put into this. So thank you for anything and everything. And then Grant is contemplating. He's like, oh my God, I don't know. Like, I don't want people raising their eyebrows. And you know, Grant is very dramatic and very like this. And here I am. I said, this makes no sense. This is me speaking to, to me again. I'm like, this makes no sense. This is an awesome deal. Grant loves it, but it's too small for him. But we need his help. I mean, Brad mostly because at that point it wasn't even right. deep. But I'm on this call. Why? I'm questioning. Why am I on the call? Why am I on this call? I am here for a reason. So I was like, Grant, can I ask you a question? He's like, sure. I'm like, hey, this is Miguel from Clubhouse. Thanks for... Uh, thanks for responding to me on Clubhouse. And I got a ticket because of it. And I'm in the club now and I've invested with you. He's like, let's go, let's go. I said, you, I, and now Brad is probably thinking, oh my God, I'm going to, like, she's going to ruin this for me. Like, what is she going to say? Because I know. <laughs> I don't know her. Like, what is going on here? I'm not asking permission to Brad. Hey, may I ask Grant a question? No, that's too complicated. Mm -hmm. I raised my virtual hand and I asked Grant. Mm hmm I said, thank you, first and foremost, for, for this. This is fantastic. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity. But can you pretend to be 40-year-old again and do this with us? Because we really need your help. This would be amazing. He's like, okay, let's do it. Done. It's over. We are on a, we're on a deal with Grant Cardone. A month later, we go into the bring your deal in real life. Grant uh, brings Brad on stage so Brad could present the deal. We, of course, went and walked the property. We're now in this together. Uh, we get we get to Miami. Brad, Brad presents and he's like, I've got Grant Cardone as my KP who wants in the deal. We raised $3 million in 20 minutes. Nice. Wow, <laughs> congratulations. So this is how the capital raising world started for me, where it found me because of that particular moment and of course there were so many lessons learned i'm taking pictures of people because i can't keep up with the names of 100 here 200 there i'm like are you kidding me the deal itself was 2.3.2 million where is the whole thing uh and uh eventually we did the due diligence we ended up walking away from the deal because it was going to lose our investors money and that's another very important uh, part to mention Vinke, since we are in the real estate conversation you don't lead with emotions mm -hmm. and just, just because grant is a kp and he was going to to freaking be an amazing journey at the end of the day is about leading with ethics and integrity and being realistic and if that deal was not a good deal, we walk away from the deal, even if it meant us being partnering with Grant or these other amazing mentors that we're surrounded by. But what that what that journey did for us, it's it's it got us a lot closer with our ecosystem, with the people from the club. And um, I continue to work as hard as I could to 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 nurture yeah. these relationships and stay in touch with them because they believed in us when we didn't even believe in ourselves. And That's those true. are people you never forget. Yeah, you know, and plus it opened up more doors for you guys. And plus there's investor trust too, because investor thought, oh God, the deal was not good. They walked away. They saved over money. So there's another level of trust. And yeah. uh, I, I could go on and on. I love talking to you, but we are way over time. So I'm going to ask you at this point, one golden nugget for my audience. If you can share one golden nugget. Uh, it would be show up as your true self. Nice. Don't just show up as who you are in every space, virtual or physical, only as you, and you will be so happy. I like that. So this brings us to our rapid fire round. I'm going to ask you five questions. You have to answer in one word or one sentence only. Are you ready? I am. <laughs> right. Uh, you gave us so many golden nuggets, by the way. Your journey is amazing. And uh, I'm pretty sure my listeners, they'll find so many golden nuggets in there. There's so, so many takeaways. People can take little bit tidbits here, there, and then, uh, you know, kind of apply into their own life. And then in a different way, not necessarily have to do the same thing. It's just like your perception, your experience, how you wanted to take this episode and uh, make it to something bigger and better for yourself. So um, my first rapid fire question for you is, 
what is one of the most important thing that you have learned in your life and how did your life change after learning it? That I am the creator of my own destiny for the most part. I love that. Uh, share one good book that you read and like to recommend to my audience. My number one absolute most favorite book is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. There's a lot of lessons there and you would really love it. That's a good one. So in one word, what does life mean to you? Living. Oh, that's a good one. What is your biggest passion? People. Oh, wow. I love that. If you could turn back in time and talk to your younger self, what would that be and why? Um, it would be, I am... I am glad that you woke up and decided to gift yourself all the amazing things the world has to offer. Oh my God, that's a really, really profound, you know, because everybody takes it for granted. You plan your life, you know, 20 years from now, 10 years from now, 100 years from now, you forget the most important thing in your life that you woke up this morning as a brand new day for you to accomplish something. Thanks for sharing that. How can people reach out to you? Uh, all social medias, I respond to my messages and I am pretty much Migena Garai or Migena NYC. My website is askmigena.com and uh, yeah, and through the books also. Thanks. On Thanks, Amazon. Migena. Thanks for being with me on my show. I really appreciate you. Thanks for having me. It's an honor being Kate. 